So why test walking speed? So many reasons. One, it's reliable. Two, it's valid and it's valid for almost every disease process. It's very sensitive for change, either up or down, so you can report it in your charting. It's specific. It, there are norms for almost every disease process. It not only correlates with the patient's functional ability, but it also correlates with balance confidence. It measures functional decline we have here, but it also measures functional improvement. It's quick and accurate to assess and very cheap to get the materials. All you need is a stopwatch and a measuring device of some sort. But most importantly, walking speed predicts function in the home and community. This is a really nice chart that tells us a lot about how the how functional and safe patients are in their home and in the community. We have this chart posted on the wall in our clinic. We, after we've tested patients, we take them over to this chart and we say, this is where you fall on the chart and uh, this is where we would like, to, like you to be at the end of therapy. The, if you're, oh, we measure it in both meters per second, which is the red color, and miles per hour. The reason meters per second is because all of the research is done in meters per second. So we need to know those numbers so we know what researchers are writing. But we live in a mile per hour world, so we have correlated it with meters per second, so it makes more sense to us. If a person is walking 0.4 meters per second or slower, which isn't 0.9 miles per hour, they are walking household walking speeds only. I can't tell you how many times I'll go into a gym and I'll watch therapists walking their patients at a half a mile an hour or maybe 0.6 miles per hour because that's how fast the patient can walk comfortably. When you are training your patients at that speed, you're training them to be household walkers only. You have to get them up over one mile per hour to be really training them to be safer at home and in the community. Mm -hmm.